Full disclaimer, not an RC technician, not a racer with any experience, but I think a lot of us getting into this hobby are in the same boat, coming from crawlers or you know, starting getting into RC fresh. So something I want to talk about real quick is the anti-roll bar that came with the DR10 kit. I think there's a lot of us out here who went with the kit just to, to get into it. And I couldn't seem to find any real info on the anti-roll bar or really how to adjust it or anything. So I'm just going to go over some quick basic things. Or I guess some things basic, some things not. So anti-roll is, I guess, designed to do just that. And it's a cool design. It makes a lot of sense. So let's say we're taking our our vehicle and we're we're zooming and we want to cut hard into a turn and and go off to the left. Well, a lot of the times what will happen is the car will start turning and your weight will be shifting to this side, which is going to compress the shock. But as that weight is basically moving over here and compressing that, your other shock over here is unloading. So weight over here, no weight over here. So while this one is compressing, this one is unloading and with that when you're going into a turn that can make your car flip over but what this anti-roll bar does is it basically tries to take a hold of both shocks so when this one compresses this one in a very limited capacity will also compress a little bit uh, which makes sense when you're going into turns and stuff but what doesn't make sense is adding this into a car that's designed to go straight. So one thing that I noticed when I built the kit was that it's having you mount the link to the anti-roll bar back here on the rear arm, and then that links up to the back of, of this bar. And I think, uh, however stiff this, you know, this metal bar is, you know, if you had something that's super super rigid uh, this might not be a problem but anyway uh, what I noticed was when it was mounted back here I would compress one and we would get zero response out of this shock until near damn near fully compressed and that just doesn't make sense so I what I decided to do or what I always wanted to try was changing the link to the front and I finally did it. In the process, I actually snapped the ball off the back. So keep in mind, you probably want to use like needle nose pliers or something. I don't know why I couldn't find any, but fool around too much, this will snap. But moving the link to the front allows you to move the, the ball or whatever forward. And with that, it's a lot more responsive, as you can see. So when we start moving, we're almost getting like an instant response. It's not quite instant. I think if I if I moved it a little further up, I could probably get it to be really, really instant. But anyway, uh, so yeah, I mounted that. You know, just zoom in here. Mounted that link to that front ball, which is that guy, and just move that forward. Actually, what I what I really did was I just held it up and let gravity kind of held it up straight, obviously, and let gravity decide where <laughs> where I tighten it down. So that's about where I tightened it down. And uh, yeah, anyway, it's it's a lot more responsive. So when we're when we're on a hit, and let's say this you know this shock gets more traction or or whatever, and makes it makes it squat a little more then it's gonna it's gonna do the same for the other side and a lot of the times we're using a bunch of spacers or you know cranking down on the on the shock if you've got one that's that's adjustable that way to try to basically do the same thing and this is just something that's kind of easy and I tried to find out more info when I was first trying to get into this because I didn't know anything about this I came from crawling personally if you're watching this video, you probably know that by now. But yeah, uh, just something to think about. Maybe something to try. I think it's going to work out better. I haven't had a real good chance to test it yet. Uh, I've got kind of limited time. But I think it's going to be good. 
so let me know what you think. Uh, I guess a couple of things to note. I did have to extend the, the actual link a little bit. And looking at it like this, uh, you can probably guess that if it's not pushed forward, it would run into the, the camber link here. Uh, but after extending it a little bit, it's not, not too bad. And the length, the length of the length didn't seem to, I don't know, didn't seem to make a, a real big, big difference. But anyway, yeah, something to try. Check it out. Let me know what you think or if you know specifically how to adjust these better, uh, let me know. And if it works for you, I guess let me know too. Thanks for watching.